Hi guys, this is BreeRead83 and I'm actually going to do something different today. Most of the time I do mom tips or, you know, different videos on helping your baby or breastfeeding. Um, but today I'm going to talk about something a little different. Um, if you've read the title, you know what I'm going to talk about. Um, but before I actually talk about it, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, you know, I'm not doing this for attention um, or for pity. I've been through all the emotions. I don't need pity, but I feel like I haven't talked to many people about this and I've worn it inside myself and I've covered it up and I buried it for a long time. And then when you have a baby, especially, you know, a little girl, you think about the things that you've been through and it kind of reopens things. And I think about the world that I want Rosalie to live in and I want it to be a world where people know that bad things happen and people know how to prevent it. And when bad things do happen, they have places they can look to heal and get better because if you are like me, you do watch YouTube videos of other people's experiences so you don't feel so alone. So if you're experiencing this and you can't get help or you don't want to get help or you don't know what to do or where to go, I'm here for you and just know you're not alone. Um, it's my biggest thing. I don't want people to feel like they're alone. I've prayed about this for a long time and this is why I started my YouTube channel is to be raw and honest and tell the truth and tell you things that other people aren't going to tell you. So um, I guess I've never really said this out loud but my name is Brie and I was molested. Um, so here's what it's about. When I was younger, my mom, um, when my mom was younger, she had a father. Um, he split from my precious, beautiful grandmother and she married the most amazing man ever, my grandpa, my official grandpa, but her sperm donor was still in her life. I call him sperm donor. Um, her father was still around in her life. Um, when I think of him or when I picture him in my head, I always picture that nasty slug thingy from Star Wars. I don't remember what it's called, but I guess that's what you do as a child. You visualize them as the monster that they are instead of what they look like in real life. Um, he would often take us out to different places he liked to eat. Um, he would take us out to Ponderosa and Perkins and different places and act like he was caring and he wanted to buy us stuff and he wanted to pay for our meals and he would come around and buy my favorite things. But when he got us alone, when he got me alone, um, it wasn't like that. Um, he had always been very mean as a person, very opinionated, very snarky and sarcastic. And when we would get alone with him, or even if he had a second alone with us in the house, he would grab my butt or touch my breast. Um, I remember my sister's graduation, I wore the prettiest orange dress. It was a little low. Um, I mean, it was a little high. And I remember him hugging me and reaching up under my dress to my underwear and grabbing my butt. Or I would kiss him, and, and when I went to go and kiss him, instead of on the cheek, he would kiss me on the lips and put his tongue in my mouth. But when we were alone, he would do other things to me. Um, Things like touch me and say things to me and talk to me like I was a wife to him and not his granddaughter. And I think the hardest part is, um, statistically, it's a lot of times a family member and you don't know what to say. He told me a lot of times that God would hate me, um, that, you know, we can't tell anyone and this is what I have to do. And he brought religion into it a lot. Um, 
and I love God, and he knew that. He knew how much I loved God, and he would use that against me to keep me quiet. And for a long time, I didn't remember, or I would forget, or I would bury it so far deep inside my soul that I didn't think or talk about it. And when he, when I started to get older, he would ask me to come sit on his lap or to hug him more. And I remember hiding when he got me a present because he knew if he bought me a present, I'd have to hug him or I'd have to go out with him and he could touch me and be around me and do things to me. And the way he manipulated all these situations, my poor parents never knew. And I, I've never blamed my parents for this. I know that they didn't know and they would have protected me if they could have. You don't expect that from your family and that's why family members sweep in and do it because we're easy access as a child and as a trusting child to your family you are easy access and you are easy to come upon and to prey upon. I didn't really understand what he was doing. I don't think I really understood what sex was or how you could get pregnant for a very long time. But I always remember as a child coming home um, bleeding and I remember I would kind of complain and we thought that maybe I just had a hemorrhoid or I pushed too hard going to the bathroom. But that was the wrong spot I was bleeding from. And I remember, you know, to reel me in, he would tell me nasty things about myself. I was a chubbier girl as a child and he would tell me that I'm fat or I'm getting hefty or I'm not looking good or when I cut my hair that real women of God don't cut their hair. And he would just tear me down in a way to make me feel so little. And then when he got what he wanted or when he would come close to me and take what he wanted because I wouldn't give it. Then he would be nice to me. Then he would buy me the presents. He always had very thoughtful gifts, so people thought he was thoughtful. He always gave me things that my mom told him I was really excited about, like I, I loved monkeys, or you know, if I, I really love sparkling grape juice, one year he gave me like 10 crates of it. So he looked like he was such a good person, like he cared about me as a person, about who I was, but to him I was just a body. A body that he could manipulate and move and take what he needed. Because that's the kind of pervert that he was. I feel like there were so many times that I acted out or I was so mean to people and they didn't understand why, especially males in school, when they would talk to me or when they would joke and say mean jokes to me, I would cut them so deep with my joke back that it would go from something funny to something horrible. But I was so used to being torn down so I could be taken advantage of that I didn't want it anymore. As I got older, obviously, for someone like him, I wasn't attractive anymore. Those are the best days of my life. When you're finally free from something like that and you don't have to be subjected to it anymore, it didn't just die off. I think there were those kisses that were, I'd kiss him on the cheek and they would last longer than they needed to or he would make me hug him and he would grope me and rub up against me. And if you're wondering, well, why did you kiss him again? Or why did you hug him again? Because you don't know any better. When you're a child and that's what you go through, you don't know what's wrong and right. And you feel so obligated and you were so scared of the person that's done this to you. When you go near them, you can't breathe. And you freeze. I don't know if anyone's ever had anything bad to happen to them, but I just freeze and I do what I can to get out of the situation. So if he's heckling me and heckling me, I'd say, okay, I'll just do this and get it over with and then I can go. Then I can leave the room. Then I can go somewhere else. And when we would have family nights, you know, he would be there and I, my parents would always ask, like, 
oh, I'm going upstairs, and, you know, I don't like scary movies, so I'm going upstairs, or I have a lot of homework, and I always made a lot of excuses, because I would never, ever tell my parents, because I was so scared, first of all, and then when I got older, um, it took me a really long time to tell them, because, one, I was embarrassed, and two, I don't need them blaming themselves. This had nothing to do with them, and it's not their fault. Sometimes the devil's in disguise. They're, a lot of these men are very good at being manipulative. They're very good at what they do. And they know how to act in front of people to make it seem like they're normal and perfect. So it's no one's fault but his. And I think holding it in for this long has caused me to push a lot of people away or to... Um, be a very sarcastic person. I have a lot of funny jokes that I make or I'm reserved in places, but that's because people that you've trusted so much have broken your trust so hard that you don't know what to do anymore. Um, but I want to tell you that I'm not a victim. He doesn't deserve attention from this. Um, he doesn't deserve anything from this. But I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. I have come out of this, you know, I don't want to say everything happens for a reason because if I could take it back I would. But there are also things about me because of this happening that I love about myself. I went into the special ed field and I love my children and I have a lot of kids that come from broken childhoods or crazy homes and I see them act out and I see the other teachers get mad and I say, I know. I look down in their eyes and I tell them, I know and it's okay, you know, and God has given me so many gifts out of this and taught me how to be more sympathetic and how to be a crusader for those that are down. If you know me, um, my husband says I'm always making him go help people <laughs> um, in Walmart or other places, but I help them because I know what it's like to be down. I know what it's like to have someone bully you and someone manipulate you and be in a bad situation. So when you see someone acting upset or crazy or they're just not themselves, a lot of times it's not their fault. There's something going on. And for me, for a long time, there were things going on, things that I acted like and I did because I didn't talk about it. I didn't pray about it. I didn't get help. And now it's better. And if you're going through this or you went through this, just know it gets better and things get better. I have a beautiful baby girl and God has blessed me with the best husband. And God has taught me through prayer and other things how to cope with this to the best way and how to be a crusader for other women and men who have gone through sexual abuse. I have brought to light so many things and when people talk about the Me Too movement and things like that, I tell them you don't know what happens behind closed doors or how often these things happen or how quiet people can be or why are they speaking out now? Because you don't just yell about it. It doesn't just happen to you and you don't run out in the woods and announce it to people. You bury it deep down and you pray that you don't remember, but you remember and you think about it, and you go through life, and you try to act like you're normal. That's why people don't talk about it for years, because it takes years to process what happened to you. It's not normal, and it's not okay. And that's why it takes so long for people to talk about it, because I needed to process it. I'm ju just as bad as those women on TV that took years to talk about it. Here I am now talking about it. Here I am now telling people about it. Here I am coming clean now. Like, I need to come clean to begin with because it wasn't my problem and it wasn't my fault. But I'm the one left with the baggage. That's why it takes so long. Because you feel dirty. And you feel like 
you did something wrong to deserve it. And some people make you feel that way. Some people make you feel like, well, what did you do? I was two years old to about 10 years old. Do you really think I was dressing too sexy? No. It had nothing to do with you. If you've been through it, it has everything to do with them. It's nothing that you should feel like you have to come clean about. But I will tell you, holding it inside for a very long time can make you a bitter person. It can close you off to the most beautiful relationships that you can have. It can ruin relationships. So if you're going through this, I suggest that you pray. Um, God is really great and he does some great things. If you're not religious, um, you know, go talk to a counselor, talk to someone. Not everyone likes to talk to a counselor, not everyone likes to get help, but there are people that you care about that you can talk to. I'm very fortunate that I have a husband who lets me talk to him about things and how I feel, who understands that there's just days where I'm just not there. But there are people out there. There are videos like this. There are on online chats. There are groups. But don't sit there and let it stir inside you because you did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. So. My name's Bree. And I was molested. And I'm going to own that for the rest of my life. Because I want my daughter to know that I am not a victim, I am a victor. And no matter how many times that he touched me, no matter how many times that he broke me, no matter what he did to me, when I look up, I don't see him anymore. I'm not scared anymore. I can enjoy things with my husband now. I can enjoy sex now, not to be, to be frank, there's a long time after someone takes away your virginity or takes away your right to say no to sex, you feel uncomfortable, but you get it back with the right person and the right people, things come back. So, like I said, I'm going to wear this and I'm going to be proud of the person that I am and what I've been through. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching my video. If you liked my video and you want to hear more or you want to know more about me, hit the subscribe button. If you liked my story time or you need to talk about it, I am open. I have an email address below. Comment below. Like this video if you liked it. I don't know. I don't need the attention from this, but I feel like this is a good conversation starter for a lot of people out there. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Um, and I hope this helps someone. <laughs>